Hi guys, <clears throat> in this video, we're gonna start converting our um, unit converter from a pure Python uh, command line application to a, to a web application. And before we commence with that, with web applications, we have to get some HTML basics out of the way. And I have here a, an empty HTML page and let's get started. Now, the initial version of our web application is gonna have text fields where you input manually. Later on, we're gonna evolve it into dropdowns. So, um, let's get started. The basic element that we need is a so-called text field. Now, all HTML comes in angled brackets and this text field requires three things. I mean, it could require more, but let, let's now keep it to three. Type, which is text, the name of it, and the value in it. We don't, we don't have a value right now, and its name is I value, basically initial value, or uh, this is basically, that's where the value comes where we, that we wish to convert. And it's type text. So if I save that, and by the way, I'm using uh, Notepad++ as an editor. And here I can now uh, just reload. And you see, there's the there's my there's my empty empty text field. Um, all HTML comes in angle brackets. Now, what I can do, I can add a label here. For instance. Um, Save and then let's reload. So you see here they can have the variable, but I prefer I prefer to have the fields label in the field itself to have you know so so the user knows what he's supposed to input in here. And there's an element called placeholder. So we have now right we now in this text element we have three um, components: type, name, and value. We can add a fourth one, which is um, placeholder it doesn't matter where you place it I mean you can put any of these anywhere so placeholder equal and uh, let's call it uh, initial value or input value it doesn't matter so if I save that and reload now you see that placeholders in here so the user knows what's to input and once you input this thing disappears I'm sure you have seen, you see that disappears. I'm, see, I'm sure you have seen these type fields in, in other web applications. And that saves you the, the space of having additional labels and so on. So, um, so that's, that's, that's our uh, value. Um, now, in, similarly, I can add then the other two fields that we need. Remember in our application, we needed three inputs, basically the value we wish to convert, the from unit and the to unit. Well, then uh, let's go and copy that, paste and paste. So that would be then from unit. That would be to unit. And that would be Or basically, let's let's do it a much more convert from and convert to. Save that, and let's reload, and we have the three the three fields. Now, what would be nice is to um, I can keep them like this, but I would like to have. And you see here what. Um, what's initially visible, especially for HTML beginners, that although they are on different lines, they're still here in one line. In order to have a line break in HTML, you have to uh, put in something like this, like break. Now that would put the, this field in one line and those two others in a separate line. Let's try it out. 
Okay, now you see, and yes, we can do double breaks, two breaks, two, two line breaks basically. And we got that. And what I would like to do is to have some space in here. It's one element I'd like to use, and it's called, it's like, it's, it's written like this, NBSP, and then semicolon. And what that is, oh, NB, it is basically a non-breaking space. And then uh, I'd even put two of these. Copy that. Two and a space. Save. And now I can space these two as well. So now, basically, that would be the sort of uh, HTML structure of our web application. And then somewhere down here, we, we would get the, the, the answer. Um, what's still missing is um, this, these uh, input fields are all part of a form and like this they will have no effect you have to put them within or enclose them in a form and the way you do that is like this so now they are part of a form and the way you define a form is it has to get an action action means where is the target of that form after pressing the button, where am I supposed to go? Well, we're supposed to go to the same file as before. And then there are two methods, post and get. Um, you will notice, you know, get uh, is, uh, let me go to Google, for instance. And let's search for cats. Uh, this is the effect of get this here you can see all those parameters that google um, uses to get its search are in here in the url and here is my my search term and that makes this search uh, easy to bookmark so uh, if i if i put any something you notice notice this how it changes that's that's the that's the type get uh, sort of the effect of get when you when you when you say the method of your form is get you get the parameters that you send in your URL which on the one hand makes it easy to bookmark on the other hand if you're like uh, you know sending sensitive data not a very good idea uh, let's say uh, cats and dogs and you'd see that changes now and that's the sort of the query that gets sent then. To the uh, databases and then these these return then the results right so that's that's one thing get and post would be the other type of forms where you don't actually see the parameters that you input in the url basically your classic uh, uh, login register forms you know they're all method post because you, you you type in your data and you press and you don't see your data in the url okay whereas with get you would so we have method post. This is the only the two things that you have to put. And then, as is the case in HTML, you have to close every tag with a closing tag. So, there are some exceptions like input, obviously, like br, but uh, a lot of tags have to be closed. For instance, if I need to have a paragraph in HTML, it is p. I open p. I write something, and then I close, and then I close p. Okay, and then if we save that, let's close that. I can see now I have now a new paragraph here. So um, in most cases, uh, all uh, HTML tags, and that's what they're called, those uh, units in uh, within those angled brackets, they're called tags. And most tags have to be closed. There are some exceptions, like br, like input, but um, still. Right. So now. We have our form, if I save that, and here, I've got it. And what we can, what we can, you, you don't notice anything, whether I inserted these or not, you don't notice anything. And if you need to see the code of any web application, it's very easy, in your browser, just go to uh, view page source, and you would see the, exactly the source that we have input in here. Right, uh, what, also another thing is, it's like the way we do in Python, well actually we have to do it in Python, but the way you do it in most programming language, it is a good idea to 
give this some sort of structure well form is the is the parent element then these would be the children and i'd like to tab them and that gives the the whole application a better uh, structure so if i save that doesn't make any difference to the to the you could also write it in one line doesn't make a difference it is just uh, easier to read right now if i test this if i test this let me put in here i don't know like 35 and then here uh, kilometers and here centimeters and return and nothing nothing happens nothing happens why because uh, there is no button i need a button i need a button to press and to get yourself a button you would do the following you would have this code type submit and the value is basically what's on the button so uh, let's say here convert save it and you see now it's convert you can write anything else let's keep it to submit and you see submit so it doesn't doesn't matter how you how you do it it demands two types and this 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 um, this button is of type submit and it demands just two things type i.e submit and the value basically what should be written on the button uh, i'm just thinking what is better submit oh, let's let's take to convert i think convert is better okay great and that's that right so now we've got our html and let's try it out uh, let's say value 35 uh, kilometer uh, mile and convert and nothing happens well with HTML alone you're not gonna get a web application the HTML is just uh, the interface it is just the user interface we still need Python to uh, do the work and there's nowhere Python mentioned here and also in our initial iteration we need python to generate this now i have generated that um i have generated that uh, manually but this 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 uh, form is uh, not effective i need to have python generate that i need to have python send the inputs that the user inputs i need python to take these inputs send them to the function we had created and i need that function to return the results and then uh, i need python to take those results from that function and display them here so we've got a lot of work to do um, but before before we go on with our work we have to set up a sort of a because html you can just create an html file file and run it in your browser you don't need any you can do it anywhere you don't need any server you, you can do it on your local machine uh, to run python as a web application you either need a server or you need a software simulating a server and um, in a different video i have uh, shown how to use a local server basically a, a server working on your machine but which acts like a web server and with this local server it's called zamp by the way uh, you can it's an open source software and it could be downloaded and i'll put i'll post the link of that video below um, with that with zamp you can install a software where you're able to run a web server on your local machine without with, without even needing access to the internet obviously this web application is only accessible to you but this is the perfect development environment and then when you're done with your uh, with your application you can then always upload it to a real server and it'll work similarly to the way it works on your zap or on your local machine and in that video i explained how to set up zap to handle python scripts and um, if you don't know how to do that just check it out if you don't have zamp or your zamp is not capable of handling python scripts then check it out because the end result 
The end result is a Python file, which looks like that. And if you go to your local host, and then whatever folder you place your application, and you go to index.py, you would get this, exactly what I printed out here. And check that video, and you will be able to reach this stage. And then, in the next video, this is our Python file, this is our HTML, and we're going to take our HTML and have Python generate that so that Python generates that form. And then Python, like I said, takes those uh, inputs and then ultimately converts the initial value that we input to the unit that we want.